Hey guys, the Lawn Inspector here with the Haunt Cast Episode 7. I just had, like, everything escaped my mind for a second. But, ain't nothing really to say. Might as well just get started. Cause I'm gonna get right into this. Nachos, how are you doing today? Okay. Pterodactyl. So I should be getting Pokemon Legends Arceus tomorrow, so that's exciting. Well, that's pretty epic. <laughs> and I should be and I should be extremely busy tomorrow, so that's pretty awesome. Okay, cool. Well, well, also, my, oh, okay, never mind. That's just some stuff. So I have stuff to talk about. And here's probably the most interesting one. So, but, so for those of you that don't follow the activities of billionaires like Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, here's, here's a little story I learned in social studies. Oh, God. So... This week, Jeff Bezos <laughs> decided it would be a good idea to have an like an historical Denmark bridge torn down to get his super yacht to the ocean. Oh this God. this this super yacht is so big that the sails on it cause a danger to helicopters. Oh my god. So what the so literally what the yacht needs is another yacht with a helipad for the rich friends with the helicopters to land so they can go party at the super yacht. Oh my god. And that's the difference between being rich and being wealthy with with rich, you you'd get that super that uh support yacht probably, but with being wealthy, you can get probably a, a super yacht and like a fleet of support yachts. It's just it's just wild. Oh god! And he's not even the richest man in the world. He's like the, the third richest. Of the rich. There's uh there's this. French guy who owns like Sephora and Louis Louis Vuitton and all them companies. Louis Vuitton, I'm pretty sure. So Louis Spider. Like. And he's he's second place, and then obviously first place is Elon Musk. So there's no telling what crazy stuff Elon Musk could do. Cause he Ow! your mic just clipped in my ear. Do it again. I'll be Your mic just clipped in my ear. Uh, Good. There, it distorted really loud. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, there's, well, there's no telling what crazy stuff Elon Musk could do. Well, obviously, you know he he likes to send people into space. Sometimes they explode. Yeah. Sometimes they don't. But. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's like the Challenger all over again. <laughs> the Challenger. Oh, man. Challenger approaching. <laughs> it's just an astronaut who only has that one round to live. <laughs> You can't even unlock him as a character. It's just they die after the battle's over. <laughs> Bruh. Oh. I think we've peaked four minutes in. I think it's time to stop. <laughs> well, that's been the episode, everybody. Episode 8 will be coming at you right after this because there's no talking <laughs> what we just... Said and no, um, ha! <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, ha! Huh? 
But I also learned some... We're going to talk for another 45 minutes. But I did technically have a topic today. And it was like, just dumb things you've done as a child in the past. Because we're still children, Ooh, but we're less of children. Yes. I have a couple things. Well, you want to go first, or should I go ahead and share a story? It's, it's, it's your channel, I mean. Okay, if you, I'll, just, I'll just help you. Uh, so, you know Tio, right? Yeah. Well, him, you know, me, him, and some other... Oh. Friends have been, you know, friends. I've I've known Tio for nine years, so obviously there's going to be some oh, stupid shit. stuff going on. Yeah. So as, I think this was like we were we might have been nine, so four years ago, and maybe eight, well, whatever. And uh, my friend, my friend. Oh, hold up the notifications, the uh, inbox. That was one. Okay. And and my friend Well I won't say any names, honestly. Let's just not go with the names. So my friend William William He he found William, yes. He found his um he found his dad's machete in his garage. Oh, shit. And yeah. William had always been very prone to getting hurt. I don't know. I honestly don't know if he's still alive. He moved away. We talked to him once after that, and I haven't seen him since. So he could oh be my dead. God. Because <laughs> he, he got hurt way too much. And it was just. I don't. I don't know. One like on multiple occasions, he has. He had. You know, he got attacked by wasps once. He, on multiple occasions, he slammed his thumb into the, like, the trunk of his car. This all by accident, too. He doesn't mean to do any of this stuff. And, like, every, almost every day we play outside, he would get hurt, injured, sometimes seriously. Obviously, everybody had at least one skin knee at some point. But, I need to get back to the machete. So, basically, the machete... What what, uh, William and Tio decided to do, is they decided to use the machete, and chop a tree down. <laughs> in, Bro, in, in William's front yard. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> so, so, so <laughs> like how big is a fucking tree? It 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 might have been the height of me now. Like, it was pretty small. So, oh, okay, so, okay. so basically, <laughs> so basically, it's just two nine-year-old boys trying their best to chop down a tree using a machete. And I don't know how they didn't get like fingers cut off, because I mean they would they would do stuff like this all the time. We had like these exercise balls that they would constantly flip over on, and they Tio had this scooter called the Y Flicker. If anybody remembers that. And wife flicker. A wife flicker. That's what it's called. And yeah. basically, get that wife flicker. basically, what they would do. Uh, William had the uh, the steepest like driveway out of everybody. So what they would do is they would just ride down the thing with with their feet not on not on the um with their feet not on their feet with the, with their feet not on the scooter. So basically, it was just a homemade knee skinner. That's all it was. Wow. Like, constantly. I don't know. They did it multiple times. I don't know why they thought it was a good idea. Every single time, every single time, one of them went home crying because their knees were just inflamed. Bro, have you ever got road rash so bad that you had, like, the fucking, like, pebbles in your hand? Uh. Mm, yeah. Because I've gotten, obviously, some scraped knees before. It was one that William, William's grandmother, was there. And uh, like she had to take me back to my house because I skinned up my knee so bad one time I couldn't walk. So that was, so basically there was just a lot of injury. 
a lot of dumb stuff. I could probably go one of one of our favorite games we used to play was called Hide and Seek Freeze Tag. Obviously, two of the best childhood games mixed in the one. And the what we would like to do a lot we would try to find the most interesting places to hide. <clears throat> One time, Tio hid in his mom's car's trunk. Uh, we've hidden under Tio's trailer before. We've hidden inside of my my four wheeler before, and my dad's trailer, and like under cars, and just everywhere. We've been in a neighbor's house before, and they Bro. didn't really even know. So, <laughs> the neighbors didn't know. No, no. It was it, what? We, we were just right in there, like we just were right by the door. Is like we stay in here, stay in here, stay in here. We would violate so many people's privacy and property every every time, every time. So Bruh. so much so that a couple of the neighbors that were on the very end put up a gate so that we couldn't get into the yard. Well. <laughs> Y'all some wild childs. Well, they were. I didn't do most of the stuff. I did the hide and seek freeze tech stuff, but. <laughs> and one time we were hiding under the trailer, and uh, William ended up getting <clears throat> uh, ended up getting bit up by ants that were under the trailer. So, yeah, like it, it's like. Basically, the score is William zero and nature like eleven thousand four hundred and eight. Bruh. So, um, what now? What you got? You got something to share? Let me think. Some like dumb shit I've done. Oh like, yeah, I little, I know. As a little child. There's, you are you. There's definitely gonna be some dumb stuff. Yeah. Man. Man, I can't think right now. Fuck. Uh, really? Well, I got... I, got I don't know. I got some more stuff if I could share if possible. No, I do want to share something. I just can't think of one to share. Well, I got I got something else real quick. All right, good. It's just about something I've learned. So basically, I was watching the Distractable podcast from Markiplier, and Ooh. Wade, and Bob, and the newest the newest episode was, uh, finding the funniest joke in the world, and right. one of the random facts that Bob shared with the two of them was these things called. Comedy K's, so it's like you know, like Krusty the Clown, you know that's that's kind of what that's based off of. Comedy K's is apparently the K is like the funniest letter in the um the alphabet, and immediately my mind went to a comedy club called the Krusty Clown Club. Krusty Clown Club, the KKK. <laughs> yeah, you, you got it. <laughs> do, do you think that was a, that was a, that's what originally happened? Like it was oh, KKK is so funny. It's it's like it's, <laughs> it's like it was originally a comic comedy club, and then the first racist joke that was made is like <clears throat> domestic terrorism. Wow, so funny. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't get it. Why? Why did that sync up so perfectly? <laughs> Domestic terrorism, bro. Why is that so good? <laughs> oh boy. It's, My lord. It's called um, Louis C K. Louis. Louis. Anyway. So do you got do you got anything to share now? Um, Your good old racist child days. 
racist child days. No, my what my like my first best friend was black. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't have that privilege. I was stuck oh with Tia. <laughs> he was a really good friend. Well, technically, if I could consider my brother a best friend, then sure. But that's what I. Yeah. But obviously, as siblings, we never got along all that well. But it's fine. I mm -hmm. do the same thing to my sister. So. <laughs> so the cycle continues. <laughs> So and that's that's kind of the play. What? That's kind of the play of being a sibling. Yeah. Uh, although I honestly, she gets in trouble more than me, so the turns have been tabled. <laughs> the turns have been tabled. Indeed, they have. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 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 You got you got something you got a story like what's going on? Uh, God damn it, bro! I do want to share something. This this way for me to think. Fucking Jeopardy music. So much your name's Jeff and you work at Walmart. <laughs> nice uh, now you sound like now you sound like your name is fucking Karen and you work at fucking and you work in an office. What'd you say about me? <laughs> oh my god. I can perfectly recreate that line every time. Fuck, man. Oh, I can I can share one of one I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, I just thought of it. So basically, I was like, um, I was very little. I was like just toddling. Okay. And you know, like little toddlers have those like little toilets or whatever, oh, little, no. little like potty training toilets. So apparently really my long. dad was wa apparently my dad was like home alone watching me and he like he was laying on the couch for like watching me and he just like fell asleep or something like that I don't know Oh wait no I'm mixing up stories never mind that's a, that's that's a different story um no he was he went to the, no he went to the bathroom all right, so he was watching me, and he went to the bathroom. Sorry, uh, there, there's multiple stories about like me at that age. <laughs> oh, because your father is incompetent. <laughs> no, no, he he like left for like a fucking a few minutes to like take a fucking piss, and then he came back, and you were dead. No, no, no. Unfortunately, no. That that would have been pretty sick. Like dead and never resuscitated. But no, but no, no, fuck that. But don't want to risk that shit. But anyway, um, yeah, he like he left for a second and came back and there was like shit wiped every fucking way. Yeah, I had like I had shit all over my fucking ass, my back, my fucking face, my hands, and. Sounds like you had like, a blowout. That's like something babies do. And it was wiped all over the walls, over the fucking like the the carpeted floor. You want you want to hear somewhere else I've heard of that happening before? The eighth grade girls' bathroom. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, that happened earlier this year. <laughs> there was. Poop everywhere. We know. We don't know who. Well, did you, why were you in there? No, it was just everybody heard about it. Like, I'm, so, so I'm pretty sure the teachers oh, were talking oh, about oh, it. Okay. Okay. Mm, okay. Yeah, that's totally what I'm gonna say. 
<laughs> what? <laughs> Man's is peeping. <laughs> peeping thumb. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you so much. I will, I will slay uh, your bitch. entire family. <laughs> Sounds like a, what a D and D player would say. I will slay your entire family if you dare say that shit again. Okay, well, it, that sort of reminds me of like when I was when I was really little, as you may expect. I was like a messy eater, but it was to the point Man. I was so bad, my parents had to repaint the kitchen oh. after I stopped doing that. <laughs> they, had oh re- they had to repaint the kitchen to get all the stains off the wall. Oh, Jesus. That's just bonkers, bro. Oh, my God. And it was just, it was just interesting. To say the least, um, <laughs> but, you know, like, what, is it, what, so you obviously just shared one of your, your, I guess not even earliest memory, at least bef- kind of before that. But I think some of my, one early- of my earliest memories I remember. Okay. What is it? Oh, so that was something that you remembered? Hmm. One of my earliest memories is a uh, what is a dream actually. It's a dream. Hmm. Yeah. Like this is one of my earliest memories, and it, it's a fucking dream. So in this dream, like I, I was really little. I was like a toddler. Like I, I was a little older. Like my mem- my memory starts roughly when I was like four. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Oh, so that's all? (laughs) No. Um. But, yeah, I. Yeah, I was like, I was, I was a toddler. And. Damn it, what was I gonna say? (laughs) He threw me off. (laughs) (laughs) I'm terrible at remembering things. But, yeah. Maybe I need to get some. Uh. Damn it, what was it? <laughs> yeah, it was a dream. Okay, so I, so I, I, my dream was I was I was like in a car on the highway. Like my dad was driving, my mom was in the passenger seat. And uh, my little brother was in the passenger, like was was in the back seat with me or whatever. Actually, wait, never mind. Never mind. My brother wasn't born yet. Uh, okay. All right, so it was, it was just it was just a uh, a vision of your new brother that would cause you pain and misery for the rest oh of your my life. <laughs> oh my god, no! But Four yeah, I was in the back in like a booster seat. We were on the highway, and a fucking gorilla jumped off like another car, <laughs> and like and like was trying to fucking like get in the back seat with me, like because <laughs> the door was cracked, and it was like trying to fucking like squeeze in. <laughs> it's a fucking full size silverback muscular ass gorilla. Just fu- just trying to get in the fucking back seat with me. It was a nightmare. Obviously, but yeah, I just remember that. Like getting out of my getting out of my booster seat and like tr- get, trying to like get away from it. And my dad like s- started speeding to like try and like knock it off. Okay, that's interesting. Well, some of, like some of my earliest memories are from pre yeah daycare like preschool, because my mom has been a teacher as long as I've been alive. So like a lot of times nobody was able to, you know, like take care of me during the day. So I go to daycare, and well, the true true earliest memory I have is just an image. It's mostly gone now, but the only thing I remember is 
like our old couch, like our old chair that is still in our living room, but in obviously a different spot, just there, and then off to the side is like some toys, and the only toy I can really picture is a, a, like an orange truck with a little face on it, kind of like Lightning McQueen style, Ooh. and then and then like the uh, the cabinet that's still there with the TV, like a big box TV inside, and. It makes me sound old, but uh, yeah, I had a box TV when I was little too. But uh, it was one of the fancier ones, though. It was like a, it was like a um, it starts with an S. It's like Sylvania TV. Yeah, it was like slightly. I, flat. I just had like a big box TV that took up the entire cabinet. Like it was like it's a big like full room dresser as well, like top to bottom basically. And it took up a lot of it. But, and it's just like an image of, you know, that cabinet with the TV and a couch and a little truck. It's just like not a memory or anything. It's just an image that I, I guess, remember. But, but like, my earliest sequence of events memories, there's two of them from daycare. And one of them, I honestly don't know if it was a hallucination or a dream if it even ever happened, or it was just, I, I don't know, but basically, I, I, I had to have been four, and we were, we were all playing in this giant sand pit that, that was just kind of there, and I was kind of, I was next to my friend McKinsey, we'll say, and... And all of a sudden, I look down, and there's just, like, a big spider on my arm with giant, Damn. like, it was big, like, white eyes and, like, red, orange, black stripes, and and it was just, like, and I know exactly what it looks like because I have, this is what makes me think it might have been a dream, because I have a toy Exactly, exactly like that at my grandma's house. It's old. It's not like mine, but there's a toy there un among the numer numerous things in her basement. That's just that same spider that I recognize very clearly. And I, all, well, all it I probably did, is a dream. And then yeah, all like because all I did, I didn't like entirely freak out. Like <laughs> I just, I just was like, oh god, what is this? And I started like trying to tap on my friend McKenzie. And she wouldn't respond. Like, nobody would respond to me, which obviously is more of a dream thing as well. And then I yeah. look down, and it's gone. So, I mean, it was so long ago that you, I just don't know. I don't know what it could possibly have been. It, it felt so real. I, it could have been maybe a lucid dream. I don't know. A lucid dream is more of like a dream where you know that you're dreaming. I thought it was like just something you could control. Um, sometimes you can control them, but lucid basically just means like you know you're dreaming. Huh. Weird. Yeah. Whatever. You can actually like do things that can like inhibit you to well that can like allow you to can like to have a better chance of being able to control them. I mean, sometimes if I know like a lot of times I can like tell myself I'm dreaming so that I can actually control something. Sometimes I try. To control things that I still can't. Yeah, I, I don't really ever do that. All I do is just, like, once I wake up from a dream, I'm just kind of like, hmm, maybe I'm going to just play with this in my head for a little bit and see what happens. And... I was, what was I going to say? And the other one. So basically there's... So there's this... The most athletic girl in my school was also in my daycare. Like, currently... We'll call her Kayla, and I just one of one of my memories was her chasing me around the daycare playground for what seemed like hours. I had to outrun her crazy self for what seemed like an hour. It probably wasn't, but it's just it just felt like it lasted forever. 
because I was basically fearing for my life. Like, I don't know what, I don't know if, whether she was being aggressive or she was being like, I don't know what she was doing. But <laughs> it was like one of the most terrifying experiences of my life. He's just it trying to dream? run away from this girl. Was it a dream? No, it was totally real. Oh my god. Like, 100% it happened. God but... damn. Mackenzie crazy. Oh uh, no, that would be Kayla. Yeah, Kayla. Kay Kayla. Kayla. Yeah, quote unquote. And... Okay, and that's yeah. Also, that's about it. That's all I got. Also, so I finally got to eat that full rack of ribs that I kept talking about. Mm. It was like it, I've been eating it for the past week, and I had it yesterday, and it's still good even after being like a week left over. Like I just wow. ripped the bones out like easily, and it was just like. <sighs> Nice and tender, like fall off the bone type ribs. Yeah, it's just like they all they all went into my mouth. My hands had never felt so dirty, but I did not care. That is that just sounds so good. For a second, you're making, thought, you're, you're making second, me for, so hungry. For, for a second there, I thought you were about to say that. This sounds so raw. It sounds so good. My hands had Shit, never... it ain't wrong to eat a ra whole rack of ribs. My hands had never been so sticky, but my soul had never felt so good. <laughs> 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 Which applies to both that context and uh, a much worse one. <laughs> but oh my god. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> what are you doing? I don't even know. What was it? Metal I hear or whatever. No, it's my mic boom arm. How fancy of you. Well, I do make music, so... Stop plugging! Ugh. I'm not plugging. <laughs> like, I, I didn't say nothing. I said I make music. I know. Why my computer being weird? I don't know. I just kind of wasn't talking, but <laughs> so basically, my life for the past while has been just constant suffering from school. Like I have a terrible math class at the beginning of each day, and then oh, terrible, God. and then terrible gym class at the end of each day. Like there's no escaping it. <laughs> and honestly, the days that are supposed to be the most fun are the worst, cause you're stuck there. It's like they call them brewing days, and basically you're stuck there with nothing to do unless uh, unless unless you want to play volleyball or basketball. You're stuck there with nothing to do but walking around and trying not to get hit in the head by the numerous amounts of mobs playing basketball. And it it's just awful. Like it makes me want to die. But is this like a COVID thing or is no? This no, like thing? no, it's definitely not a COVID thing. Like oh my god, there's so many people just bunched up. <laughs> but it's just like so you either you either play volleyball in the middle, which usually doesn't harm the people walking because. The volleyball can't always reach over there, or you, or you walk, or you decide it'll be a good idea to play a vicious game of basketball. Oh, I while, just remembered something. While people are walking right by you, and there's the chance of getting concussed by a basketball. But anyways, what do you want to say? I just remembered something at, at my middle school. Whenever um, we had uh, specific, like all my time at middle school, we had one principal, and then she and then she left the, the year that I uh, went to high school. So yeah. basically, this principal 
Like the whole time we were there, like if, like if uh, one of one of like the grades was like being bad at lunch or something like that, then we would ha- then we would have to we would have to walk that Wednesday. Huh. Interesting, but walking ain't that bad. So it, we so she called them walking Wednesdays. Well. What, what, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna say? So we in, like we had to walk for, walk at recess. Oh uh, yeah, yeah that make, that's yeah that's a typical punishment. But in uh in f- f- middle school, we've always had the same principal. He's been there for a long time, I assume. But in elementary school, we had two principals, and that second principal is now retired. He retired just this December, and now they have a new principal as again but our our original principal her I'm not actually no I'm not going to say her name but she she retired because she wanted to spend time with her mom and then her mom passed away immediately after she retired so that's that was pretty sad mm. yeah and then, and then, the and then a new principal showed up, and he was he was cool, ap- after a while at least. So, I mean, I feel bad for the first principal, but hopefully she's doing fine now. And I think I think the worst position we've had for like switching out constantly was our music teacher, because our first music teacher, after scarring us for, uh three years of yelling and showing us a video of human vocal cords moving because it was our second grade play and she wanted to teach us how to sing um she finally she finally went to teach in some exotic country like some island country to help like poor kids there or whatever and then we got a new teacher and this teacher she was kind of weird like she Seemed very unenthusiastic at all times, but also she wasn't, like, mean. So she was alright. And then our third music teacher in fifth grade, she was crazy. She just, she is just weird. But still not as weird as, like, we've always had weird music teachers. Actually, no. In... And I think it was I think it was first grade we had a fourth music teacher that came from like the other elementary school that is right next to ours for whatever reason and her and her name was like really weird name I can't remember it I think I might but I'm not going to say it and she she was probably the best one out of all all of them and I had, so I had the first one from kindergarten and then second grade. I had that fourth one in first grade, that uh, second one in third grade and fourth grade, and that third one in fifth grade. It, it was just, it's just been a bunch of weird switching out. And then, in middle school, it's been relatively normal. Because we have had the same principal... Like, all the same staff. Obviously, some teachers have come and left, but it's not like I... Like, it's not like any of my teachers have left in the middle of the year. I don't think that ever happened. But, you know, you know something that did happen? I actually made, like, an agreement with my third grade teacher when I was in kindergarten that she wouldn't retire until I went to middle school. And, yeah, sure enough, she retired... When I went to middle school, so I'm not not entirely sure if that was the reason, but she just did it anyways. She was in her sixties, so yeah, she re- she deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> I t- I talk about all that, and all you have to say is yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. I just rambled for the past. I don't know how long. Maybe maybe five minutes. Damn. I also learned a uh, disturbing fact. So, 
apparently Hugh Hefner is finally getting charged for all the terrible stuff he did to all those women in the Playboy Mansion days. And something I learned was that apparently there was a 10-year-old girl named Brooke Shields on the Playboy magazine, naked in a bathtub. Oh my god! And she's, I think she, she, she's in her, like, 40s or 50s now, I don't, she, she seems fine now, but that, that was just awful, I don't know how nobody was like, what the hell's wrong with this, what's going on here, I don't like it, but just nobody did anything about it. Jesus fucking Christ. And she as she continued to act like everything was normal, like nothing was wrong with it either. It was it could have been forced. Like her mother was in on it too, was the worst part. Oh god. Oh man. And she I mean she seems to be doing fine, but I just feel bad for her. Like she's been she she had been put through so much when she was young. Like I'm pretty sure she said that she like somebody took her virginity when she was fourteen. Probably something to do with that same type of stuff. Maybe it was seventeen. It was something still not great, but I just don't know. Well seventeen's still. not as bad. Well, still, but still still kinda bad. Still if it has something to do with it then it is bad, but if not then Yeah, I think yeah. I, it, it might have not been that, but it, it seems like it. I think Something, something seemed off about it, and it, it's just it's just awful. It's like so many disturbing things happen. I have been, I have been writing an argumentative essay for ELA class, right? And I decided to make my talk topic about how homework should be banned because there's like a list you could choose from, and I decided to take the darkest route possible for mine, obviously, and. Oh, I God. went. I I decided that the most hard hitting evidence for why homework should be banned is the deaths homework has caused. Like legitimately, there is there is in 1900 June 8th 1900 there is a Harvard student who died of a brain abscess because of too much homework and overstudying. What the fuck? And then. In 2015, there is a Chinese schoolgirl who committed suicide after her parents and teachers chastised her and punished her so much for not doing her homework that day. And there was also, even worse, a nine-year-old French boy who was beaten to death by four members of his family because he didn't want to do his homework. Oh my... You say French? French, France, France. They were beating him with baguettes, probably. <laughs> well, it was it was with like brooms and stuff, but still. Man, they got man. Why you gotta hit the kid with a baguette? And so th those are like some of the some of the craziest stuff I've ever heard. Like I, I always knew that suicide like was could be caused by homework because like depression is a real <laughs> symptom of too much homework. Which obviously is more common in teenagers because, first of all, they're more pr prone to it, and second of all, they just get like way harder and much more homework. And it's like, please God, make it end. Just so I mean, really, what I believe is that high schoolers shouldn't have homework, but like elementary school students and you know middle school students should, because it's easy, honestly. But then you get to high school, and it just makes you want to die. Yeah, I mean it's just it's just like please make it make it end the suffering it must end. Uh... Dude, I hate math so much right now. <laughs> what are you what are you doing in math? I'm doing college level shit. Oh. <sighs> I'm doing shit with like fucking logarithms and. All this other bullshit. So imaginary numbers. That, that just that just that just sounds like something that Alice in Wonderland would make up. <laughs> oh my god. 
you know, like right now we're doing this. I mean, it's, it's relatively simple. It's like you know, e exponential functions or whatever. But next, the next uh, like segment up, like topic, I guess you could call it, is something called polynomials. Yep, polynomials. I'm working. I'm working with like solving polynomials and shit right now. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me! What grade are you in? <laughs> Tenth. So we're doing tenth level stuff. Tenth level, yeah. Tenth grade, tenth grade stuff. Of course we are. Like, I, I, next year, all the kids. Oh my God, your mic just clipped again. Ow. <laughs> I feel my pain. But like next year, all of the kids who already can't do this easy, like eighth grade homework, because we've seen their homework. It is baby mode. Any of them who cannot do that will literally want to die next year. Oh, wow. So yeah, I guess we're I want to die right now. And like our teacher has been warning us all year about polynomials. It's like it's going to be bad. Everybody gets stuck on it. It's yeah. just going to be awful. So basically, math sucks. Jim sucks. Hugh Hefner sucks. Jeff Bezos sucks. Um, you know, dumb kids sometimes suck. Ribs, though, those are good. Anyways, those guys, are delicious. the Lama Spectre's out. Have a nice day, and we shall see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>